Good morning. This is Robin from Northwest Connecticut, Zone 6A. Um, I wanted to just talk this week a little bit about <laughs> gardening is not exactly glamorous. Uh, here in Connecticut, it's usually humid uh, where, you know, I'm hot and sweaty and dirty, suntan lotion all over me, um, which I got to remind you, make sure you put your suntan lotion on when you're out gardening. But a lot of the gardening tasks it's not just like fun and games, but we do it because we love it, uh, number one. Um, but sometimes they're just mundane things that need to be done. Um, in this week's video, I'm pulling out annuals um, that have either been destroyed by rabbits, chipmunks, or voles, and replacing those. You can hear birds <laughs> flying in the background. There's a bird's nest near here, and he's not happy, or she's not happy that I'm near her nest. Um, so that's what we're gonna look at today, just uh, replacing some of those things, trying to get the dahlias in the ground. Um, I've had to cage them because the rabbits are eating them. And uh, I'm always open to suggestions. Believe me, we've tried every kind of repellent that there is. The voles are so bad that I'm like at a loss for what to do uh, this year. This has kind of uh, been kind of crazy. And I'll show you some quick updates about what's going on in the garden uh, and what's blooming besides the stuff that I'm actually working on. So I think like a lot of people, some of my spring container plants still look fine. Um, you can see the, the pansies are, are fine, but it's time to pull them out. So I've got some uh, substitutes here that I'm gonna put in, Supertunia Royal Velvet. Um, I don't know what this other one is but it's really pretty white with purple veining and a purple center. And I think that'll go nice with Supertunia Velvet. And I think I might throw in a couple of the uh, white Garas here. We'll see, we'll see. I'll show you when it's all done. So another thing that's gonna go in the ground, I think uh, you might remember back when I was talking about making one of my new beds that I was waiting for some Baptisias. Um, the Pink Lemonade Variety Decadence Deluxe Pink Lemonade. So they finally have arrived. Um, they get uh, about 42 inches, four feet tall, approximately. And uh, they're in zones four through nine. So I have pretty good luck with, with Baptisias. So now I've just got to figure out where they're going to go in that bed. I've made a few changes since I originally planned it. So we'll, we'll see where those are going to go today. You might remember when I talked about making this this new bed over here that the uh, three Baptisia pink lemonades were going to go here, here, and over here. Well, uh, I waited so long for them, so I I put in a lilac, a small reblooming lilac there. I'm going to just move the uh, gomfrinas, the truffle of pinks, which are recovering because the rabbits have like eaten down to nothing but they are recovering so i'm going to move them um, and then we have some um, salvia unplugged pink and this is an annual so i'm probably just going to move that to make some room and then i think i'm going to stick the other baptisia in there somewhere around in there by the day lilies um, between the day lilies and the grasses i think because the cotinus is still going to get pretty big so we'll see where i end up with them and i'll show you so I started Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus from Seed. Um, so I still have a bunch of those I haven't gotten in the ground. I've got some Larkspurs, I've got some uh, Sahara Rebeccia and Cherry Brandy that needs to, these things need to get planted at this point. More Larkspur, a bunch of Coleuses. Um, I'm still working on getting dahlias in the ground because I, I really need to cage them all um, so they don't get destroyed. But things are starting to come up. And the last group that I'm gonna work on, um, these are some other James Britannias. These seem to be recuperating a little bit, but I'm gonna add in some uh, Salvia Rock and Blue suede shoes uh, to kind of fill in because I don't think, <laughs> I don't think these James Britannias are ever gonna be um, of any size. So I'm gonna put, put, in the, uh, put in these Salvias. So we'll get this all in and I'll show it to you. But they're really pot bound, so I'm just gonna loosen Loosen the edge, uh, the bottom, loosen the roots a little bit. I'll add some Biotone uh, starter fertilizer, water them really good, and hopefully they'll fill in a little bit where the James Britannias have been destroyed by rabbits and 
chipmunks and maybe they'll still continue to uh, recuperate. These these are looking a little better. The other 10 I had to pull out. Uh, I've had to pull all the James Britannias out of here also. And again, I'm uh, sticking in this Super Tunia Bordeaux. Why do I think the voles won't eat these? Um, like, not even a clue. Uh, just hoping for the best. Let me show you what damage voles do. They completely eat the roots of plants. So, so much for my James Britannias. So I pop those in, we'll see what happens. This is how this area came out where I pulled out the James Britannias and I also uh, put in some more Russian sage denim and lace. Uh, got a nice big dahlia here called Mrs. I. De Ver Warner. <laughs> I can never say that, it's really pretty, pretty, pretty pink dahlia. Um, so these have survived the night. So let's see if everything else did. Well, let me give you a little tour of what we've done in the back here. So we've set up uh, a really fine mesh rabbit <laughs> deterrent, I hope. Uh, they ate all the marigolds, so I gave up on that. I have some lettuce in there. I have flowers in here, Sahara, um, some purple basil, some calendula, um, some cosmos. I have in uh, the bags, I have some Orlea, some Celosia, um, some marigolds. I'm, in, I'm getting ready to remove the um, ranunculus. Uh, they really didn't do too well. The first bunch, I just pulled them out. I'm gonna put the uh, uh, Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus in there and some more seeds, I think. And then I've got um, over here, hang on, I've got tomatoes and broccoli um, radishes, scabiosas, carrots, and again, some coleus and more flowers. Some, there's sweet pea, las, la, I can't say it, Latharus, L-A-T-H-R-U-S, something like that. I'll, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but again, they ate the bottom of that, so I'm not sure how long that's going to be good for. Um, but that's, you can see, I, maybe, um, probably not. The very fine, let's see if I can get that, the very fine mesh we have there. Well, as of right now, so far so good. Um, you can see that we've got the, the Spireas, the, the Hosta Brother Stefan, and then the Supertunia, um, Supertunia Bordeaux. So all along here. So I don't know, my fingers are crossed. I'm hoping that that stays, we'll see. Just a sneak peek here, Elsa Spath blooming on this arbor uh, that has wisteria all over it. And it looks like some of the, uh, oh yeah, looks like some of the clematis is peeking through. It's got a hard battle because this wisteria is just crazy crazy taken over. I mean, it's, it is, I mean, check this out. I mean, I can't even get over how much it's grown since we hacked it to the ground earlier this year. So I pulled out the pansies. Um, and so I put in, like I said, the Supertunia Royal Velvet, and I, I'm not sure what this other variety is. Didn't have a name. So pretty though. It's like white with the purple center with the purple veins. Um, I could only fit four in here. Uh, the Anchianthus is a uh, way bigger root ball at this point, um, and I just couldn't squeeze more in there. But these will really fill in, and you know, you'll have, it, it'll fill in that whole area. So uh, when I, when it gets to a decent size, I'll show you what it looks like. The Goras ended up over here in this bed. I couldn't fit them in the container with the Enchianthus. There just wasn't enough room, the root ball, and that was too big. So it's over here next to the Chemiciparus soft serve gold. So it'll fill in this area behind uh, cone flowers. Price is white. That's getting ready to bloom. And we have a bunch of dahlias over there behind it. And we have some flowers uh, planted in the back there. So we'll see. We'll see what that all looks like got all the uh, wicked uh, newly noir sorry I always call this the wrong one newly noir coleuses so hopefully they'll start putting on some size I feel like things have grown 
very slowly. And I think some of that is just uh, that we haven't had a ton of heat. Uh, it's a very warm weekend this weekend, so I'm hoping we'll see some some decent size on some of these uh, some of these plants. I mean, even the annuals like Supertunia latte um, down down right here. Um, it's time for these things to start growing. So this is Geranium Roseanne. I just wanted you to see, I talked about, I mean, it's a great ground cover, um, but it really can get to be a pretty good size. Um, you can shear it back after it blooms um, and it'll come back. It's in here with um, daylilies and yarrow that is self-seeded itself. And my little, my little fountain here. And so you can see it. There we go. Kind of buried underneath this uh, crab apple tree and this and the salix. Another annual update that I haven't had to change, um, and I did this one last year, and I really loved it, so I'm trying it again. Uh, Supertunia silverberry and play, salvia playing the blues. Um, they both get to be a really nice size. They fill this whole area in. Uh, you might remember I had this filled with tulips um, in the springtime. Um, so this is this is looking pretty good. This arbor is now starting to bloom a lot more. So the Clematis elsaspath um, is still blooming. The new dawn roses are going. Uh, not too much with the wisteria, but again, I cut that one back. That was Amethyst Falls. And then I've on the uh, side over, on that side, I have the autumn white clematis. Let's see if I can get in here and here's a new dawn rose and then there's Elsa's bath. We've got a few of those coming up there. Very pretty. Very pretty and when it's when it's completely covered um, it, it just, it draws your eye the minute you pull in the driveway. I'm not sure if you've ever seen a mock orange, Philadelphus. I wish to God you could smell this thing. It is gorgeous. Um, this is one of the better years I've had for it. It seems like the leaf is getting a little variegated. Um, when it finishes blooming, I am going to cut it back a little bit because it's starting to lay on top of the betony. Uh, baby's breath I have down there, Artemisia. Um, there's, and I have a day lily down there and the Veronicastrum in this bed is, oh my God, going crazy this year. Um, but it, some of these things are starting to really, uh, get on top of, uh, some of the other plants. This Amsonia is kind of getting buried. This rose is probably getting the life sucked out of it as far as, uh, access to air. So I'm going to have to maybe make a couple of adjustments here we'll we'll see but uh as i mentioned this mock orange the smell if you can get one i i highly suggest it you'll never be sorry the smell is just intoxicating so the baptisia's uh pink lemonade uh ended up right over here um in front of this bloomerang lilac and the uh, blackout Bucharas. I am just moved the truffula pink gomfrinas over a little bit and moved one of the um, unplugged pink salvias over a little bit. So uh, hopefully, uh, so far, the rabbits and stuff have been leaving the other baptisias alone. So I'm kind of hoping that this will uh, also be the same thing. So there's a little bit wider look. So that's where that stuff went. On to planting dahlias today. Ruined. I'll give you a quick tour around. So you can see the two big containers that I have here, uh, which I got from the Pottery Barn, by the way. Um, but you can see the gladiolas are finally putting on some size. I feel like every uh, major statement in my containers has been taking forever. We've only had a couple of really warm days and things are finally starting to, to bloom a little bit. Here's one and here's the other. I also have some larkspur in there. Um, you can see right here I have some loose strife. Um, this is not an invasive one. I have some loose strife that's finally, things are finally starting to bloom. I've got a clematis that has self seeded itself over here. Um, so I, I'll have to look and see what it is when it opens up. Finally, have some cone flowers. 
Uh, let's see what else. You can see my dahlia cage down there. Let's see what else we can find. Uh, also, all the, all the nepeta is blooming. It's my favorite flower. I use nepeta walkers low, and I have it here in this bed with, with grasses like Carly Rose, um, a bunch of different purple daylilies. You can see the allium heads are still shining. I love them, even when they don't have any color left on them anymore. So it looks like, so far, so good. The things I planted the other day are still still on the ground. So we still have the uh, Supertunia Bordeaux still, still with me, thank goodness. Uh, got a foxglove. This is Foxy Foxglove. That's starting to pop up. I've got a few things that are finally starting to grow because the, um, like I said, it just hasn't been all that warm. So we have Wizard of Oz, Veronica. This is really pretty. My white one is not doing as well, but this one I planted last year, so it's doing okay. Invincible Limetta Hydrangea. And just getting ready to open up is Queen of the Prairie. Philopendula, that's getting ready to open. And let's take a look. Oh, we have some, ooh, hydrangeas. These are bloomstruck. Pretty, really pretty. And we have a few of those. This bed is really getting way more sun than I ever intended. And this is the bed that I'm having the most trouble with voles. Um, they are really running rampant. Um, I think I've tried every kind of repellent, and now we're trying these sonic things, which I swear aren't working. The astilbes are now blooming. So these are white ones. We've got pink ones that are coming right here. The ladies' mantle is still blooming. The nine barks look, look great. This is aruncus called goat's beard. Let me get back so you can see it. This is huge. Just huge. And then we've got more hydrangeas hiding in here. And here. Oh, that's a pretty one. That's really pretty. Coringa Shoma getting ready to bloom. Let me show you this as let me try and get that in as it's going to have a really pretty little yellow flower. It's called yellow wax bells is a common name. And heading over this way, one of these days I'll sit on that bench again. Um, so where I pulled the James Britannias out, uh, these are uh, all still going. These Supertunia Bordeaux still look reasonably okay. Um, the dahlia back here, Jennifer's wedding, seems to have survived. Uh, this bed is one of my new beds. Um, and looks like my elderberry is blooming in the back there. Cryptomeria looks good. This is Invincible Spirit 2 Hydrangea. And uh, Proven Winners makes a donation. Uh, to the Breast Cancer Society um, for every one that's purchased, so I purchased a few of them. My aronia that the rabbits ate, um, slowly recovering, slowly. Um, looks like we've got uh, things working sort of okay um, in this bed. Um, I took out, well, I had some flowers that did not come up. Unfortunately, my snapdragons, none of them came up, and I'm so disappointed. Um, but I put in some coleuses. I put in some mahogany splendor hibiscus, which is finally growing. I think I once I took it out of the tiny little pots, it seems to be finally growing. I've got some lettuce, some broccoli. Oh my goodness, look at that. Wow. Oh my God, that's gorgeous. Wow, look at that zucchini. Oh my gosh, I've never had so many flowers open. <gasps> At the same time, I think I'm gonna have to make some stuff, zucchini squash blossoms. Holy cow, gorgeous, gorgeous.
We have a clematis here called Diana's Delight. It has not quite opened yet, but it's got lots of blooms. That catalpa tree right there is looking gorgeous. I'm pretty sure there's a nest in there though. So every time I go near there, forget it. Milkweed has seeded itself all over. Um, but I try to do anything I can to promote uh, life for the pollinators, uh, bees, butterflies, uh, good insects, wasps, you name it. The containers are finally putting on some size. This one has uh, Euphorbia, Alternathera, Plum Dandy, and a Colocasia called Heart of the Jungle that can get three to five feet high. Um, so some of the annuals are finally starting to grow a little bit. We've got this little solar powered fountain here, kind of struggling a little bit. That bird bath needs to be cleaned. This container has canna and caladiums. That's growing pretty good. We've got a gigantic hosta here. And then we have more stilbies, white and pink. The clethora has not really started to put on blooms yet. Look at the size of that palace purple. Hookera, um, Aconocloa, got a really beautiful hosta back there that I talked about the other day. Uh, let's see, we've got yarrow that has self-seeded itself in with my uh, daylilies. Um, it's great because it's got that nice flat head and pollinators love that, especially butterflies. Ooh. Looks like I have some dahlia blooms. Yay, finally. But you can see, I have them caged right now still. Uh, the Gora is doing okay. Uh, this nine bark over here, Festivus Gold is finally putting on some size. Thank goodness. And let's see what else we can find. Golden full moon maple, Japanese maple. Uh, we've had to put a, a, um, a barrier between our air conditioner and this because the heat from the air conditioner was actually starting to kill it because um, it's gotten so large. So this pot has a grass and some calla lilies. So we'll, uh, we'll see, they're just starting to open. I'll show you when it's a little more open. We have lots of geranium roseanne, salvia caradona in this bed and a salix that desperately needs some attention because <laughs> it's really kind of getting out of control, out of control. And more of my favorite, Nepeta Walker's Low. We have made another set of cages. Oh, I'm so tired of this. I've never had this problem before. I found two chipmunks in here last night. I have sunflowers, I have cosmos, I have basil. Lots of things I grew from seed. Bells of Ireland that's coming up. I'm so excited about that. Some zinnias. Um, finally get some strawberries. Um, yeah, finally getting some strawberries. This container has gladiolas in it. Yellow gladiolas called Ovadi. And then we've got the really pretty little pansy, which looks fine. We've got some artemisia and some, I think this is banana cream maybe? Oh wait, hang on a second. Vanilla butterfly, uh, daisies. Tough stuff hydrangeas are all starting to open. Uh, the pretty lace caps. And you can see Boone Chocolata right there behind it. Uh, my hearty geranium. And then I have another three over in this bed over here behind the Spirea ogons that are right there. So I have another three in here of the Tough Stuff hydrangeas. And then I've got some roses behind them and a spruce in this bed that's also gotten way big. That was like five feet high when I bought it. Jesus, crazy. Um, let's take a quick look. Okay, so these salvias have survived. The James Britannias are almost reviving a little bit, but I'm not going to 
speak too soon to that. Adjuratum. Adjuratum. Uh, something else. Catanch. That they, they ate down, so I'm not sure what it's going to look like. Unplugged blue salvia in front of the ogons, so I'm really trying to do that, that purple and yellow green combination. Hibiscus. Uh, I mentioned earlier this year, hibiscus come out very, very late, but then they grow really quickly. So you can see in the last couple weeks, this has really already become a shrub. Quick fire hydrangeas are open, or opening. Uh, I've got three really good sized ones here. And then just following down the path, the smoke bush, Cotinus royal purple, is in bloom. The, like I said, the salixes need serious attention. I've got, uh, oh, got a lily that's getting ready to open here. These are getting ready to open. I'll show you when it opens in front of the penstemum and in front of the nine barks. Wee white hydrangeas. Just a quick little tour. Oh, I had two daylilies that opened. This one was called Fi Olali Firecracker. It's really pretty red. Um, I'll get another shot when it's open because daylilies are only open for the day, right? And I have another on the other side purple called Shaka Zulu that I got from a friend that is also blooming. Um, I don't think there's one. Let's see. I don't think there's one open today. Let's just take a quick look. Nope. It's not quite open. Not quite open. And see, this is what I mean about bowls. They're everywhere. It's driving me out of my mind. Hope you're having a better <laughs> Better luck in your garden with critters than I am. I do want to show you, look how big my baptisias are. This is uh, Twilight Prairie Blues, and uh, there's another one in here, and I've had them for a long time. But uh, some of the, the baptisias can get very, very large. Now, these have just finished blooming, but the seed pods are still really pretty, so I won't cut those. Calicanthus, sweet shrub. This is also blooming, and I am going to have to cut this back a little bit because it is monstrous at this point, and it is also completely <laughs> shading the daylilies that are underneath it. This little river birch, oh my goodness gracious. Uh, I've actually shaped that up a little bit this year, but I can't even get over how big it is. Uh, just because something you think something says dwarf doesn't mean it stays small. Just letting you know. Uh, we've got some lilies ready to open. Right there. Some kind of Asiatic li lily. Uh, just got it at Home Depot a few years ago to fill in this bed when I first made it. The Veronicastrum is also getting ready to bloom. I see, I see flower buds. Let's see if we can see that. Yep, getting ready, getting ready to bloom. The mock orange is just about finished. And the betony is also open, which is nice. I love that one. These are liatris uh, that I planted and are coming up and what, uh, what hasn't been eaten. <laughs> this container has a canna. Um, I mean, a, uh, yeah, a canna, toucan coral, um, and some kufia, and some sweet peas that I popped from seed um, in the back of that container. And let's see, this is um, a yarrow called Vintage Violet, and those are all blooming right now. I love that. Love that Ruby Ribbons grass. What's not eaten? <laughs> uh, I've got some agastache. That's all starting to open there. I've got some more Liatris right there. And got some Orlea here that's recouping from being eaten, which is why it's caged. Uh, I think. Let's take a look. There's the Baptisias that I planted, and they're also surviving. So far, so good. 
I hope you found some of these things um, interesting and uh, informative or, you know, just general garden tasks and, you know, what I do to keep my garden looking uh, nice all year. Um, please subscribe, hit that like button. Um, always appreciate it. Uh, if you're looking for some blogs on gardening, I have some on my website, uh, lencydesigns.com. I do do garden uh, and landscape photography as well as travel photography. So that's why you always see my logo at the end, uh, Lency Designs Photography. And uh, I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much.